I had not heard of LaShonda and Marlon Moore. I think those are the correct names, but they keep popping up on my YouTube feed. So I went down the rabbit hole with them. I had to go to pull up the documents to see exactly what the allegations were, what they had been accused of. And I guess it's sort of like using religion to try to get money from people. This is some of what I heard. Yeah. No doubt at some point in time, I'm going to have to head over to Pacer where I can pull up all of the documents that have been filed in this case. I think this comes out of the Eastern District of was it Arkansas? How about if I click on this so I can actually know what I'm talking about? I was very fascinated to see a lot of this. Like I said, I first found out about this as it was coming up on my feed. And now I really, really want to just dive into it. If you guys have seen some of my other deep dives, I've done a deep dive into Elizabeth Holmes. I've been doing a deep dive into Tyree Nichols. I did sort of a deep dive into the Chrisleys. I'm now very interested in this one. This may take me a while to go through it. On another note, I also want to give you a heads up that I've been checking out the FBI vault and I'm thinking about doing a late night live series on that because the family of Malcolm X is looking at suing, I think, I don't know, FBI, NYPD, some of these other government agencies, there's a whole set of documents in the FBI vault. I'm thinking about doing a late night series. Okay, now late for me might not be late for you, but a late night series live where we just sort of go through these documents and look at what's in them. But now back to the Eastern District of Arkansas, state of Arkansas. We've got the attorney general there. I need to turn off my phone. Plaintiffs versus Bent Operations, LLC, a limited liability company. LaShonda Moore individually and as officer of Bent Operations, LLC. And Marlon DeAndra Moore, formerly known as Marlon DeAndra Maiden individually and as an officer of Bent Operations LLC, those are the defendants, it says complaint for permanent injunction, monetary relief, and other values. So this was filed back in 2021. This is something that apparently has been out here for a while. I'm not sure why it's popping back up now, but again, I'll find out. I'll find out. Plaintiffs, the Federal Trade Commission and the state of Arkansas collectively plaintiffs for their complaint alleged the FTC brings this action under sections 13B and 19 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. I send people there all the time when they tell me somebody has scammed them. I tell them go to www.reportfraud.ftc.gov. It's sad that I know that by heart. And the Consumer Review Fairness Act of 2016, which authorized the FTC to seek and the court to order preliminary and permanent injunctive relief, monetary relief, and relief for defendants' acts or practices in violation of the FTC Act, the CRFA. Defendants' violations are in connection with their operation of a blessing loom pyramid scheme. I'm hoping this is going to be defined somewhere in this complaint. The state of Arkansas by and through Leslie Rutledge, the Arkansas Attorney General brings this action to redress and restrain violations of the Arkansas Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Okay, summary of the case. Defendants, Bent Operations LLC, LaShonda Moore and Marlon Moore collectively defendants have operated Blessings in No Time or Bent, which they have claimed to be a safe, lucrative and legal money making membership program. Okay, so all of a sudden my flags go off, intuition goes off, red lights go off. In truth, BENT has been an illegal pyramid scheme 
Bent has solicited money from consumers and promised them investment returns as high as 800%. Again, more alarms. These promises are false. The supposed investment returns defendants have promised members they would receive have been in reality merely funds other members paid to participate in the scheme. By the program's design, most members have not earned returns, but have instead lost the money they have paid to participate in BENT. Therefore, BENT has not been a safe, lucrative, or legal money-making program. In addition to help perpetuate their scheme, defendants have prohibited members from posting anything concerning BENT online or on social media. Members who have violated this rule risked forfeiting the money they have paid into the scheme. This prohibition has prevented aggrieved consumers from alerting other consumers that BENT has not been a legitimate enterprise. BENT defendants through their BENT program have caused thousands of consumers tens of millions of dollars in losses. In particular, defendants have harmed at least hundreds of Arkansan consumers. All right, there's jurisdiction. We've got the plaintiffs, which is the FTC, an arm of the US government. We have the Attorney General of Arkansas, and then we have the defendants. Defendant Bent Operations LLC, Bent, also doing business as Blessings in No Time, is a Texas limited liability company incorporated in August of 2020. I almost want to stop because this was filed when? This was filed in 2021, so not even a year, I guess a year later, they're already in front of the FTC and the Arkansas Attorney General. It didn't take long. Usually it takes a little bit longer, but this didn't appear to take long. Its principal place of business is located in Prosper, Texas, Bent transacts or has transacted business in this district and throughout the United States. Defendant LaShonda Moore is a co-founder, promoter, and managing member of Bent. She managed the day-to-day -day operations of Bent and appeared in numerous live videos in which she promoted the program, attempted to recruit new members, and made false representations about the earnings consumers would enjoy by investing in Bent. At all times relevant to this complaint, acting alone or in concert with others, she has formulated, directed, controlled, had the authority to control, or participated the acts and practices set forth in this complaint. I think there should have been an N in there. Defendant LaShonda Moore, in connection with the matters alleged herein, transacts or has transacted business in this district and throughout the United States. Defendant Marlon Moore is a co-founder, promoter, and managing member of Bent. He helped manage the day-to-day -day operations of Bent and appeared in numerous live videos in which he promoted the program, attempted to recruit new members, and made false representations about the earnings consumers would enjoy by investing in Bent. At all times relevant to this complaint, acting alone or in concert with others, he has formulated, directed, controlled, had the authority to control, or participated in the acts and practices set forth in this complaint. Defendant Marlon Moore, in connection with matters alleged herein, transacts or has transacted business in this district and throughout the United States. Okay, commerce. They're saying defendants have maintained a substantial course of trade in or affecting commerce as it's defined in the FTC Act. Okay, so let's get down to these blessing loom pyramid schemes so that we can hear how this is set up. Because I've been wondering, even as I've been watching um, some of the videos that talk about this, and they show these pictures with these circles, I'm hoping that some of this will show up as exhibits to this complaint so that we can take a look at it and get a better understanding of how they were trying to portray this whole blessings in the loom, because right now I don't understand. So I'm interested in, in hearing how this is going to go or how they were sharing this or presenting this with people. Blessing loom pyramid schemes. For many consumers, the COVID-19 pandemic has meant twin disasters, a global health crisis paired with job loss or diminished income. Scammers have sought to capitalize on consumers' financial hardship by promoting purported investment or fundraising programs that are in reality are dressed up pyramid schemes. 
vent is a chain referral scheme, a type of pyramid scheme that does not typically involve the sale of products or services. Blessing looms, circle games, and money boards are among the names used to describe chain referral schemes like vent. Blessing looms typically coordinate payments within the pyramid using playing boards that track members and their respective positions within the program. This sounds complicated to me already. In general, these schemes falsely promise a big return or as Bent termed it, a being blessed out following a modest initial payment. In reality, however, very few consumers make any money and the few consumers that do make money sometimes lose their profits by reinvesting in the scheme. Moreover, the amounts paid to some members of the scheme are not returns on any investment. In truth, revenues come from payments other later members make to participate in the scheme. In such chain referral schemes, the money dries up as soon as the scheme's members can no longer find new recruits willing to make those payments leaving newer members unable to recoup their payments. A blessing loom pyramid scheme imitates an informal savings club called a SUSU. Now I did see this pop up too. I was not familiar with them and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. SUSUs have historic and cultural roots in West Africa and the Caribbean. In a SUSU, a small group typically composed of friends and family, pull their money into a common fund and take turns receiving the payout. But unlike an illegal blessing loom, members in Asusu are not promised they will earn interest, are not promised more than they pay in, and are not rewarded for recruiting new members. My family members, at some point in time, we've sort of fallen off of this, but we had our own little thing where we would pull money on someone's birthday. So say your birthday came along, everybody would cash up you $5. And then that would be sort of your blessing. We didn't call it a blessing. We just, or maybe some of us did call it a blessing. But just imagine you have maybe 20 family members that all of a sudden send you five or $10. And yeah, there was, it, you weren't supposed to send a whole lot of money, but you know, sometimes depending upon who it was, I might send somebody a little bit more depending upon what their need was. So that was a way of giving blessings without having to do all of this, telling people they're going to get 800% back when you know that's not going to happen. Maybe some of you have participated in this or heard of this and are familiar with the Susu one that sounds more legitimate than what is going on in this case. All right, back to the complaint. Defendant's business activities. Okay, so now we hear what they were doing. Beginning in at least June 2020. Now remember, so this complaint is only coming a year later. Defendant LaShonda Moore and her husband, Defendant Marlon Moore, created and have promoted membership in, in a purported money-making program called Blessings in No Time or BENT. In August 2020, they formed a company, BENT Operations LLC, through which they have operated the program. Defendants have lured people into joining BENT by promising investment returns as high as 800%. Defendants have not promised the, have, have not premised the money consumers could allegedly earn from their blessing loom on selling products. Moreover, defendants have not limited how much members could contribute to BENT. While $1,400 has been the minimum required to participate in the program, members have been told they could earn greater revenue by contributing more money and recruiting additional members. Some members have paid as much as $62,700 to participate in BENT. BENT's Blessing Loom. Consumers typically have been recruited to join BENT by friends, family members, and acquaintances. Consumers have joined the program by submitting an application at bentapp.com and listing the member that recruited them or by texting a code to and following the instructions to apply. After joining BENT, members could participate in the BENT Blessing Loom. Like most Blessing Looms, BENT has coordinated payments between members termed blessings in BENT using playing boards. BENT's playing board has consisted of four levels arranged concentrically. In the initial version of defendant's scheme beginning in June 2020, the first level of BENT playing board 
furthest from the center contained eight new members termed fires. These participants were usually the recruits of the four members on the second level, the wind level. Usually the third level, the earth level had two members with one member on the fourth level, the water lower level at the center of the board. Below is defendant's graphic explaining the process. So let's take a look at this. And this is really what I wanted to see how this was set up. And you can see right here, it says start. A board will begin being dropped as empty. For each spot you agree to occupy, the same board will be dropped again as a full board listing your name in fire position. Again, I have no understanding of what this means. One, fire action. Bless the water within 24 hours of the board drop. Once all fires have blessed the water, the board will split and you will now be a wind. Wind, add two fires within 24 hours of full board drop. Once the fires have been added and have blessed the water, the board will split and you will now be in the earth position. And earth, same sort of thing, and then water here. And I guess they mean when, I mean, I'm not sure. I should just further read. This is so confusing. The members on the first level, the fires, were required to send a payment, that's what I was thinking, or blessing, typically $1,400 or more, to the member at the center of the board, the water. So these here at the fire send a payment that goes to the water. In August, defendants begin requiring that members pay to use a board management software called connect me to keep track of their position on the board and their payments members on the second level the wind level were tasked with recruiting two new members in lieu of recruiting new members wind level members also had the option of paying bent a set fee for recruits to be added to their board or paying additional money themselves to fill the fire position or if the wind level member had never received a payout from the BIT program, they could request that BIT provide them their two required recruits free of charge. After all board positions were filled and new recruits had sent their payments, the board was ready to split. When a board was split, the initial board was divided into two new boards. The individual in the middle of the original board was removed and all other members moved up one level toward the center of the board. Then the process repeated. New recruits were added to each board and these recruits sent their payments to the individual in the center. This process continued indefinitely with each completed board splitting into two new boards and members moving up a level with each split. After three boards, a new recruit or fire from the first board would be in the water and ready to receive the blessing from the new fires or recruits. I think I finally understand now what's going on. Defendants have promoted BENT as a safe, lucrative, and legal money-making program. Defendants have promoted BENT through a variety of methods, including through their website, bentapp.com, by sending mass text messages, and through word-of-mouth recruiting, regularly hosting live video calls on platforms such as Zoom and band.us. Defendants have primarily targeted Black communities and have stated in the Bent Bible, which contains Bent's membership bylaws, that all Bent members must be of African-American descent, absolutely no exceptions. In around November 2020, defendants eventually eased this restriction on membership. On this topic, defendant LaShonda Moore stated in a recorded live video that Bent is still a Black community it will forever be a black community, but it is now officially right now open to all. On their website, defendants marketed Bent as a new type of investing or fundraising called link funding. It's always interesting when people come up with uh, new names for these things. Defendants specifically target financially distressed consumers, claiming that link funding would permit members to do everything from paying for your own surgery to fulfilling a student's dream of attending college and so much more. Their website claims that people often turn to link funding when they can't afford the rapidly increasing cost of medical care or when they lack insurance to cover major medical procedures and that link funding provides an alternative when funding from the government 
and nonprofits falls short. Defendants have claimed their program has provided a means to achieve financial freedom and generational wealth. For example, defendants claim on their website that people can use the BENT program to build wealth with your crew. Harness the power of social banking technology, machine learning, and credit building resources. Further, BENT's website prominently displays purported member testimonials touting the financial success they claim to achieve through the program. One claims, quote, in six months, November 30th, to be exact, I became debt free, unquote. Another states, quote, I can honestly say if it had not been for this community, there is no way I would have been able to reach my financial goals for 2020, unquote. In a recorded live presentation for BENT members, defendant LaShonda Moore has claimed that her personal goal has been to see many of y'all, how many of y'all I can turn into millionaires. In another recorded live presentation, defendants LaShonda Moore and Marlon Moore introduced a guest speaker who has asserted that BENT is a great opportunity for each and every one of us to do something that we were told we could not do. We could not be financially wealthy. We could not buy this house on the other side of the railroad track. This is a process where we can get up to $11,400 every month. That's at a minimum, unquote. Defendants have promoted BENT as a community-oriented program where members have worked together to help each other achieve financial success. For example, their website claims BENT is helping people meet their life goals and touts the, quote, thousands of members serviced within the first six months, unquote. In a recorded live presentation, defendant Marlon Moore has stated that defendants had started their program to, quote, to help, quote, people achieve some kind of success in their lives, unquote, to help people to come together in a time of need and to help people help other people become better in their finances. Defendants have claimed BENT has been a safe, lucrative investment and that members would not lose money. In many instances, defendants have promised BENT members that if a member paid $1,400 to join a BENT playing board, they would be paid out $11,200. And if they paid $1,425 to join the board, they would be paid $11,400. As detailed below, defendants have assured members that they could withdraw at any time and receive a full refund of any money paid into the program. Defendants initially claimed that so many people wanted to join BENT that members would not need to recruit anyone to receive their first $11,200 payout. They simply needed to pay at least $1,400. Once that promise started to fall apart, defendants began pushing members to either recruit participants or invest additional money in lieu of recruiting. Defendants have repeatedly assured participants who expressed concern about the security of the money they had paid into BENT that they would eventually receive a substantial payout. For example, in, in recorded live presentations to BENT members, defendant Marlon Moore stated, quote, we're going to make sure that y'all get blessed. Just trust us, unquote. In another live video presentation, he further assures members no one will lose. Likewise, defendant LaShonda Moore multiple occasions to stated that members would not lose money in BENT. For example, in a recorded live present video presentation, defendant LaShonda Moore stated, quote, you guys will never, and I hope somebody's recording me, I'm recording myself saying this right now. Y'all will never come in here and say, I lost more than I put in. At a minimum, we will make sure that whatever you have put into this group, you will get back. And we built our own insurance inside of this community to make sure that happens, unquote. Moreover, a guest speaker introduced by defendants LaShonda Moore and Marla Moore told the Bent community in a recorded live video, quote, the last time I checked, if you can, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's not a person out here that can say I lost money with Bent, unquote. Defendants have also repeatedly represented to members that Bent has been a legal and a legitimate method of investing money and generating wealth. For example, in a recorded live presentation, a guest speaker claimed that the sum of money consumers that invested in BENT at that time proved that BENT was a legitimate enterprise. Quote, if 29 million, i.e. the amount of members had invested in BENT to this point, don't tell you or does not make you think that this is legit, sweetheart, you are in the wrong place. 
you are absolutely in the wrong place. If 29 million does not confirm to you that we are serious about the things that are going on over here. So please understand that the legitimacy of what Ben is doing, of what LaShonda and Dre has put together, it is absolutely unquestionable. The amount of money that somebody puts into an investment does not... <laughs> is not the definition of how you determine whether or not an investment is legitimate. You know that. Defendants LaShonda and Marla Moore have also made frequent reference to consulting with their attorneys concerning the changes they have implemented at Bent, implying that the program was legal. As proof that Bent has been a legal operation, defendants have touted that government employees have allegedly been a part of the Bent community. How does that necessarily make it legitimate? In one recorded live video, LaShonda Moore and Marlon Moore alleged that the Bent community has included individuals who are high up at the IRS, as well as employees at the Pentagon and FBI. Noting these prominent Bent members, LaShonda Moore concluded, so anytime you all think we're doing something wrong, know that we aren't. So here's the thing. If you have to consistently tell people and remind people that what you're doing is legitimate and legal, that in and of itself should be questioned. Why feel the need to constantly say that? Defendant LaShonda Moore informed viewers of a recorded live call that Bent operated according to the Attorney General standards. Further, in a recorded live video, Bent's manager stated, quote, Bent moves this way for a reason. Bent has been to the Attorney General's office and has come out scotch-free for a reason. We have attorneys for a reason. We say yes and no to certain things for a reason. That's because we are working legally. And so I know a lot of times you guys send us ideas and you're like, why can't you do this? And you think that we don't listen. And that's not the case. We listen. However, we've already been legally advised that that's not in the best interest to the business of Bent, unquote. Additionally, in a recorded live video, defendants, LaSh defendants LaShonda and Marlon Moore discussed a recent law enforcement action brought by the attorney by the Arkansas Attorney General against a blessing loom scheme similar to Bent. While assuring Bent members they had nothing to be concerned about, Defendant LaShonda Moore stated that the things that they are actually being sued for, those things have never and will never happen over here with us. Defendants have also repeatedly assured members they would receive a full refund if the member has decided to leave Bent for any reason. For example, Bent's frequently asked questions document for Bent community members states that members may request a refund by simply going to bentapp.com and selecting request a refund. Moreover, in recorded video calls with Bent members, defendant LaShonda Moore stated, quote, I just need to know that everybody that's in this group trusts us. Let's say 25% of this group decides to leave right now. That's 2,000 people. I'm going to stand 10 toes down and say, we're going to give all those people their refund. We're going to do right by those people and the ball is going to keep rolling. Whatever we have to do to keep this train going is what we're going to do. And guys, I meant that, unquote. Quote, we are working refunds in the order received. You will get a refund. No, there's no other community that gives you refunds, unquote. Quote, it's a long refund list and we'll make sure you get it, unquote. Additionally, in recorded video calls with Bent members, defendant Marlon Moore stated, quote, guys, if you put your name on the refund list and you qualify for a refund, you will get a refund, y'all. So just let us work it. Just kind of be patient with us. But we're still working these refunds every, each and every day. We'll get to you. Don't worry about it. So just understand it's a process. And, you know, we're still working it to the best of our, our ability, unquote. Quote, you guys will receive your refund. We're not going back on that, guys. We're still going to give you your refund, unquote. Defendants, however, have failed to provide requested refunds. Moreover, LaShonda more recently admitted in a live video call that Bent no longer has the funds to provide the promised refunds and that proposed defendants, quote, do not have to financially, do not have it financially to refund everybody in this community, even if we wanted to, unquote. In reality, Bent is a pyramid scheme. Contrary to defendant's promises, the structure of defendant's program, which created a continual chain of recruitment and recruitment-related payments, is a pyramid scheme. Bent's structure has ensured that few members would achieve the results defendants have promised. In fact, most members 
necessarily have failed to recoup their contributions, let alone realize any profit. Bent's structure has required that it grow perpetually and exponentially. For every member who received the promised payout, eight additional members had to pay into the scheme. Thus, no matter how many members received the promised payout, many more members would necessarily lose money simply based on the scheme's structure. This is true regardless of how big the scheme grew through exponential recruiting. Below is an FTC created image illustrating the board splitting process. So we have the operation of Bent's blessing looms, complete loom at the top, one blessing loom, you've got eight fires around, then that splits into two. So now you have two blessing looms, those split into two, and now you have four. Those four split into eight. You guys, yes, I'm sorry. Each of those is split. I was only counting the ones that I could see. So four blessing looms, and then those split, and you have eight blessing looms. And you can see how they tell you how many of the new people who have to come in for each of those. And those are the fires that you see on the side. So in the beginning, you only needed eight fires. By the time you split into two boards or blessing looms, you need 16 down here, okay? And it continues to grow. Then you need 32, then you need 64. To keep the scheme growing, defendants have pushed members to bring in new potential recruits termed sparks. I guess they're not quite fires yet. For example, in one of defendants' videos, the speaker enticed bent members with possible rewards for bringing in the most recruits. Members that sign up the most sparks will have a chance to win cash giveaways, big screen TVs, iPads, and gift cards. In a mass text message sent to vent members, defendants stated that members with the most new signups can win cash giveaways, flat screen TVs, and much more. Please invite all your friends and family to join. In another instance, defendant Marlon Moore in a recorded live video encouraged members to tell all your people, tell all your friends and family to join a vent recruitment Zoom call. To entice members to do so, Marlon Moore informed members Bent would be giving away two 50-inch flat screen TVs, Amazon gift cards, and other prizes to members that invite the most consumers to the Bent recruitment presentation. In the same recorded live video, defendant Marlon Moore instructed members, I need everybody to go out there and talk to anyone from three to five people, right? Go ahead and talk. Go ahead and have those conversations. Get them pumped up. Get them excited. Don't worry, when you get them here, we're going to do the rest. While defendants had initially promised that their first payout would not require recruiting, members had always been required to recruit to obtain subsequent payouts. Moreover, defendants LaShonda Moore and Marla Moore have encouraged Bent members to confront other members who hurt recruiting by speaking negatively about their experience on the Bent message board. In one recorded live video, defendant Marlon Moore told viewers that members who made negative statements about Bent were taking the blessings out of your pockets. Moreover, on many occasions, Bent has removed members who disparaged or criticized Bent from Bent Brent's, Bent's private band app messaging board. All right, changes to Bent's program and the Bent restart. Defendants have made several superficial changes to their program over its lifespan. It should say it's short lifespan. However, while defendant's scheme has evolved over time, it has remained a pyramid in every iteration. Many of defendants' changes have been intended to address stagnation in recruiting or paying out bent members. One such change, termed fusion, was implemented in September 2020. Now remember, this had only started in June, so by September they were having to make changes. As part of this process, defendants have halved the size of some playing boards to lessen the number of recruits required to be entitled to a payout and have cut the promised payout in half. Moreover, around this time, defendants began combining boards that had vacant spots, which had been created either by members dropping out of the event program or by other members' inability to recruit. In each instance, rewards paid out have been based on recruiting and the basic pyramid scheme structure of the scheme has remained. In September 2020, defendants also began allowing members to participate in subgroups within BENT. Subgroups functioned as pyramid schemes within BENT community. 
Defendant LaShonda Moore described subgroups as an extension of BENT. Subgroup leaders have managed the playing boards of their smaller separate group of BENT members under the guidance and direction of defendants. In November 2020, BENT announced an upcoming restart or reset of BENT. As a result of this restart, BENT would visually restyle their playing boards, update the terminology used to describe the process, and change the individuals on the playing board who receive payments from new recruits. The outer ring of new recruits would become the blessings. The second level would become invitations. The third level, nesters. The individual in the center of the board would become the testimony. Because members had become hesitant to contribute more money into the BIT program, defendants would change the structure of payments to get members' money faster. Now, new recruits would split their payment between the individual in the center of the board and the individual in the second layer who recruited them to the playing board or to whom they had been assigned. This process is described in a graphic from BIT's membership handbook below. So now we have a totally new layout here. I think this one's harder to follow than the first one. But as you can see, uh, they have some sort of drawing here. So you've still got your blessings, send 700 to your invitation and 700 to the testimony. Notice the wording that is used here to describe the payments that people are making or receiving. Around December 20. 20, defendant LaShonda Moore described additional changes to the BIMP program, which she had claimed were intended to allow BIMP members to break even. Specifically, defendants plan to reduce members' spots on playing boards such that members would no longer profit but merely get their money back. That is, if they were able to make it to the center of the board and receive a payout. Defendants will likely continue to violate the law. After luring in thousands of consumers into their scheme and causing them to pay tens of millions of dollars, defendants continued to promote and operate BENT, even while being aware that former members had complained to the FTC, state attorneys general, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, among other authorities, concerning their illegal operation. In a February 2021, we've now made it to a new year, Live video presentation, defendant Marlon Moore detailed plan for the upcoming restart of BIN and changes to the BIN program that defendants have planned to implement in or around April 2021. On this video call, defendant Marlon Moore assured members that you can still recruit, you can still bring people in. Defendants have attempted to hide their illegal activity from law enforcement and payment processors. For example, they have forbidden BIN members from using certain payment apps to send their payments due to those processors having previously flagged bent transactions. They have also advised members to change the payout amounts to avoid detection by payment apps. Further, defendants forbid members from posting publicly on social media about bent, specifically Article 1 of Bent's Bent Bible, which contains Bent's membership bylaws, states, adhere to the Bent Privacy Agreement, absolutely no posting anything Bent related on social media, regardless to if you say bent or not. Moreover, Article 2 of the Bent Bible includes a code of conduct that includes social media posting in a list of automatic termination actions that will result in immediate termination with bent with zero tolerance. Bent's code of conduct further states that members who violate bent's membership requirements risk permanent termination, refund could be forfeited, and forfeiture of initial investment or blessings sent or blessings to be received. Additionally, Defendant's Bent 101 Community Resource Guide advises members that posting on social media will result in immediate removal from the Bent community. In many instances, defendants have required that consumers agree to Bent's prohibition against posting on social media and the internet as a prerequisite to joining the program. Consumers have been able to receive information about how to join BENT by texting the word FIRE to the number there. In response, consumers have received a text message instructing them to please click on the link below to enter required information for enrollment. This text message further includes a hyperlink to BENT's enrollment page. In addition to requesting identifying information about the consumer, the hyperlinked enrollment page includes BENT's privacy agreement, which states, Please read carefully. Guidelines are set in place to protect your personal safety and the financial blessing community. If they are not adhered to, there is a strict consequence. 
If you text content and details from the presentation in the group chat, you risk the information being posted on the internet or its social media. If you post on social media or on the internet, you will be removed from the board and removed from the group chat. Immediately beneath this privacy agreement, the enrollment page states, reply, agree below to the privacy agreement, followed by an empty text entry box for consumers to type their response. Based on the facts and violations of law alleged in this complaint, the FTC has reason to believe that defendants are violating or are about to violate laws enforced by the commission. Defendants have engaged in their unlawful acts and practices willfully and knowingly, and it continued to do so despite being aware that consumers had complained to state attorneys general, the FTC, and the SEC, among other law enforcement agencies. Defendant LaShonda Moore had previously participated in a different unlawful blessing loom before loom scheme before launching bent. However, moreover, I, I wasn't expecting that. So as you can see, I got a little caught off guard by that, that she had participated in one before. Moreover, defendants have continued to engage in their illegal scheme, even after learning that Arkansas Attorney General brought a civil action to halt a substantially similar pyramid scheme, Arkansas versus Passionate Minds Foundation, Inc. Defendants have taken steps to hide their activities from payment processors and law enforcement agencies. Further, defendants have stated explicitly their intention to continue operating their scam and maintain the means, ability, and incentive to do so. Okay, so violations of the FTC Act. We've got misrepresentations and deceptive omissions of material fact constitute deceptive acts or practices within the act. A pyramid scheme constitutes a deceptive act or practice within um, Section 5A of the FTC Act. Okay, count one. Let's see how many counts we have. Count one, illegal pyramid scheme. Defendants have promoted participation in programs that were characterized by the payment of consideration by a new recruit to other participants in the program in return, for which the recruit obtained the right to receive compensation for recruiting others into the program, thereby resulting in a substantial per percentage of participants losing money. Defendant's promotion of this type of scheme, also referred to as a chain referral scheme, a type of pyramid scheme, constitutes a deceptive act or practice in violation of the FTC Act. Count two, again, under the Federal Trade Commission, rep misrepresentations. In numerous instances in connection with the advertising, marketing, promotion, offering for sale, or sale of the right to participate in BIN, Defendants have represented directly or indirectly, expressly or by implication that people who participated in BENT would A, earn substantial income, B, not lose money, C, receive a full refund upon request, and D, be participating in a lawful money-making program. In truth and in fact, in numerous instances in which defendants have made the representation set forth in paragraph 59, people who participated in BENT A, did not earn substantial income, B, have lost money, C, did not receive a full <clears throat> refund upon request, and D, we're not participating in a lawful money-making program. Therefore, defendants' representations as set forth in paragraph 59 are false or misleading and constitute deceptive acts or practices within the FTC Act. Count three, unfair restrictions on publishing truthful commentary. In numerous instances, defendants have used tactics, including financial threats, intimidation, membership bylaw and code of conduct provisions and privacy agreements prohibiting members from publishing material related to BIN online or on social media, which have prevented consumers from speaking or publishing truthful, non-defamatory negative comments or reviews about BIN and its operations. Defendants practices have caused or are likely to cause substantial injury to consumers that is not reasonably avoidable by consumers and that is not outweighed by countervailing benefits to consumers or competition. Therefore, defendants' practices constitute unfair acts and or practices in violation of the act. This is a lot. Okay, let's keep going here. Violations of the Consumer Review Fairness Act of 2016. CRFA defines covered communication as a written, oral, or pictorial review, performance assessment of, or other similar, similar analysis of, including by electronic means, the goods, services, and conduct of a person by an individual who is a party to a form contract with respect to which such person is also a party. 
So it defines a contract as a contract with standardized terms used by a person in the course of selling or leasing the person's goods or services and imposed on an individual without meaningful opportunity for such individual to negotiate the standardized terms. So they're saying there was no opportunity for people coming into the VENT program to negotiate. The CRFA renders void any provision of a form contract if such provision prohibits or restricts the ability of an individual who is a party to the form contract to engage in a covered communication. Saying you can't really restrict us, that's going to be void. The CRFA prohibits any person from offering a form contract containing a provision described as void. Pursuant to the CRFA, a violation shall be treated as a violation of a rule defining an unfair or deceptive act under the FTC, and the FTC shall enforce the CRFA in the same manner, by the same means, with the same jurisdiction, powers, and duties as FTC. All right, so then we have the violations there. They say, and this is count four, defendants have offered form contracts containing provisions that prohibit or restrict the ability of an individual who's a party to the contract to engage in a covered communication and impose a penalty or fee against an individual who is a party to the form contract for engaging in a covered communication. Therefore, since their contract had those terms in it, they have violated the CRFA. Then we have violations of the Arkansas Deceptive Trade Practices Act. It says, Arkansas law prohibits a person from knowingly making a false representation as to the characteristics, ingredients, uses, benefits, alterations, source, approval, or certification of goods or services. And let me just stop here for a second. Um, there is a difference between making a material false misrepresentation and engaging in puffery. So puffery would be something where you're using these subjective words to say, oh, well, our program is the best program in the world. That might be puffery, okay? But telling somebody you will get an 800% increase over what you put in, that's a little bit more objective. It's very straightforward. They knew it was not going to take place. So that is more likely a false representation in addition to some of the other things that they said. That's just an example of Arkansas law prohibits the use of concealment, suppression, or omission of any material fact with the intent that others rely on the concealment, suppression, or omission while selling any goods or services. It is a violation of Arkansas law to engage in unconscionable, false, or deceptive acts or practices in business, commerce, or trade. Under Arkansas law, a pyramid promotional scheme means any plan or operation through which a person gives consideration for the opportunity to receive compensation, which is what they did. They paid in to receive compensation primarily from the introduction of other persons into the plan or operation rather than from the sale of consumption of goods or services or intangible property by a participant. So if primarily you get paid because you're bringing other people in, then that is a violation of the law. Count five. Defendants knowingly made false representations to consumers as to the benefits, approval, or certification of their services. It says defendants misrepresented that consumers would A, earn substantial income, B, not lose money, C, receive a full refund upon request, and D, be participating in a lawful money-making scheme. Count six, concealment, suppression, or omission of material facts. Defendants concealed, suppressed, and omitted material facts with the intent that consumers rely on that concealment, suppression, or omission by A, implying that their activity is sanctioned by the state of Arkansas, inviting consumers to participate in an arrangement in which defendants have reason to know will not result in a payout for all participants as advertised, representing that an agreement confers or involves rights, remedies, or obligations, which it does not have or involve by falsely representing to consumers that participation in an organization will confer upon them a right to receive monetary payouts. D, representing that an agreement confers or involves rights, remedies, or obligations which are prohibited by law by inviting consumers to participate in a pyramid scheme, investment opportunity, or charity program that is prohibited by law, failing to inform consumers of the accurate chances of a payout or award in any pyramidal scheme. Whoops. <clears throat> any pyramidal scheme, investment opportunity, or charity game, and misstating, misstating legal definitions and concepts to consumers. 
Count seven, defendants have engaged in unconscionable, false or deceptive acts or practices in business or commerce and trade by deceiving consumers into investing their money into a plan that functioned solely as an engine of fraud and caused significant economic damage to the affected consumers and converting consumers funds and use, utilizing those funds to enrich defendants at the expense of consumers. And then count a illegal pyramid scheme. It is unlawful to promote any pyramid promotional scheme. Defendants have engaged in prohibited conduct by soliciting funds from consumers for the opportunity to receive funds. That's basically what it is. Encouraging plan participants to invite other consumers to participate in the plan. Operating a plan through which consumers paid money for the opportunity to receive compensation rather than from the sale or consumption of goods, services, or intangible property. So recognize that the pyramid scheme counts that you see are coming at, from both the federal level at the FTC and the state level from the Arkansas Attorney General. Consumer injury. Consumers are suffering, have suffered, and will continue to suffer substantial injury as a result of defendants' violations of the FTC Act, the CRFA, and the Arkansas DTPA. Absent, absent injunctive relief by this court, defendants are likely to continue to injure consumers and harm the public interest. So here's the prayer for relief. Wherefore, plaintiffs, FTC, and the state of Arkansas request that the court A, enter a permanent injunction to prevent future violations of the FTC Act, the CRFA, and the Arkansas DTPA by defendants, grant preliminary injunctive and ancillary relief, C, award plaintiffs monetary and other relief within the court's power to grant, D, award the state of Arkansas civil penalties as the court finds necessary to address defendants violations, the Arkansas DTPA, and award plaintiffs any additional relief as the court determines to be just and proper. That final thing that we always put at the end when we're asking the court for relief. So there you have it. There is the full complaint from top to bottom, from beginning to end for LaShonda and Marlon Moore. Like I said, this has been popping up so much. I wanted to understand a little bit more about how this blessing loom was operating as a pyramid scheme. And for those of you who were participants in this and have lost money and do not get your money back, I uh, my prayer is for you. I hope things work out for you. We'll see how this continues to develop as I do a deeper dive into this. But if you are now a little bit more educated on how some of these chain referral schemes work, what they look like, if you're a little bit more informed and knowledgeable, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.